If you want to get back with your ex, no contact is something that you need to consider. For me, it's one of the most powerful strategy out there if you want to be successful. The thing is, I have a specific kind of a very unique way of seeing how to do no contact and why it works, uh, you see. Uh, in a minute, I've listed seven reasons why no contact is an amazing attraction tool. I'll explain everything after the jingle. I get my ex back.com. Everyone deserves a second chance. So first of all, I think is one way for you to be more attractive. The thing is, we have to transition from a phase of you being depressed, crying, you know, the caricature of like the runny nose crying with the red eyes and stuff like that to shifting that image to an independent person. And one way to do that is to create some space between these two faces, these two people. If there is a continuity, then your ex might not see, might not be surprised about that new person. By going to contact, you also create that image of someone who is not needy because needy isn't sexy. Needy is sometimes a primary unconscious drive that we have because we want to connect if you are, for example, anxiously attached. It's something that is really driving in the background, but from a relationship recovery point of view, that's the worst thing you could do. So accepting the breakup is a sign of strength. Of course, you didn't take the decision, perhaps it came as a shock, but fighting it will make things worse. When I say this, I'm not saying your relationship, the, the, the process is over. It means that you won't fight from a place of lower status, right? So you decided to end the relationship. And when you do that, you really or immediately put yourself sort of a lower status. We need to fight, we need to chase. Okay, the idea is to create a space where you would become more attractive, where you would work on yourself, and we'll discuss in the later points where when you reconnect with your ex, you are at the same level if we can see things this way. Second one is it's the only way your ex will miss you. It's as simple as that, is mechanic. If you're always there, if you're always reaching out there's no way they will feel the loss, okay? The thing is, your perception of loss is different than your ex because your ex took the decision and the only thing he or she wants is to be on their own. And you feel the loss because you don't hear from them and that's why it's very hard for some, some people to go no contact because they feel that if I stop messaging them, if I stop calling them, they will forget me and I will feel the loss, right? They also need to feel the loss, the dumper, will feel the loss if you have had a strong relationship. If your ex was in love with you, he's probably in love with you at this time. You have to, to go no contact because you would create that feel of loss. Otherwise, they will feel that they eat, they have the cake and eat it. They're not with you, but they can still hang out with you. They don't want to reject, they reject the relationship, but they still have you if they want to. If you, ex, if you want your ex to reconsider things, it's very important for you to go no contact. So this breakup is very hard for you and it needs to be difficult for them. Now, of course, there are cases where when you go no contact, it's way easier for your ex and your ex will move on and will forget you and that's over. This happens. This happens to actually a vast majority of cases. And you've probably been in that case in previous relationships. Now, if you want to check whether your relationship can work, you need to assess the strengths of the relationship. So I put together a quiz for you to check this right away in the description. But it's basically, if your relationship was not big enough, of course, no contact, your ex would be so happy not to hear from you and will forget you, will move on. That's what happens in most cases, most, more than 50% of relationships. If you're watching this video, your relationship was not something meaningless, it's something that meant something for you and you know that it was mutual. And that's worth fighting. That's why I love my job because I know sometimes relationships are worth fighting for and that's why I'm doing these videos. That's 
why I have, I'm helping clients on one-to-one, -one because sometimes it's just worth fighting for something that matters. There's a highly chance that your ex also feel this way, it's just that they felt it was not working. So just have a look if you haven't done, take the quiz. If you want to work with me, you need to take the quiz anyway, because I really want to ensure that the people I work with have the right sort of foundation of the relationship, just assessing this. Third, give you space and time to have a plan. No contact is something active. It's just that it's not just no contact and I do nothing. If you want to get back with your ex, something needs to change. Okay, it sounds common sense, but some people forget about it. Just think they go no contact, they go on with their life, they, uh, you know, they keep the same job that, you know, that prevents them from um, spending time with their family, for example, and that's what created the breakup. Um, they go no contact and they don't want to see a therapist, but they still feel very anxious or very avoidant and they are not addressing any of their insecurities. And what happens is when they reach, they connect with their ex again, the ex won't see any change and then there, would, there wouldn't be any drive for them to reconsider things, okay? So you really need to create that, what I call an inventory of your relationship, of your attachment, of your insecurities. And you cannot, you cannot do that if you're in touch with your ex. You cannot do that because you're gonna have like a mental load of things uh, about the communication, about what to say, what to do. You'll be you know, really obsessed about getting back with them, but you're missing the whole point. You're missing the whole point that something needs to change and you can't do that work with your ex. You have to do it on your own, or with a therapist, with a friend, with whoever, but not with your ex. If you're confused, let me know. You have my contact details in the description. Fourth, prevents you from pushing your ex away. So what are the other things to get, to get an ex back? I'm going to list them so it's out to beg, to plead, to spam their inbox, to show up at their workplace, to send this, to send gifts. These are the worst things you could do, okay? Now the opposite <laughs> is to go no contact because when you go no contact, that's why I think it's so efficient and it's so popular as a, as a strategy, is that it's very simple to apply. You just don't contact your ex. <laughs> the thing is, we assume that no, but there's no harm in getting in, in staying in touch with my ex because I'm not I'm not being angry, I'm not being emotional. Yes, that's the case for 95% of the time. The problem is, and I see that consistently, I'm not making this up, I see that consistently. People they are in touch with their ex for three, four months, and then something something comes up because they haven't dealt with those insecurities, they haven't really changed the the dynamic of the relationship, they, they haven't really convey the idea of change, they get frustrated. And then there's this 5% of thing when they do something wrong, they push their ex too much, and then it's over. So sometimes we do an amazing job for 95% of the time, and that five remaining percent can kill all our effort. So that's why I think it's very important for you to consider no contact, to have a proper plan of action to really because when you engage with your ex after that phase of no contact, you really want to be clear about your intention and you really want to be clear about how to do it. Fifth one, it helps you regain confidence. And confidence is sort of a good attractive uh, trait of personality. The thing is after a breakup, and I've been in your shoes, it's just awful. You feel like worthless, you feel like you won't find anyone, you feel like rejected, and that's the worst feeling ever. Right? So staying in touch will maintain this idea. You're staying in touch with someone who doesn't want you, who rejected you. It's temporary, of course, but that's how you feel. And anytime you're gonna be in touch with them, you feel this way. This, this connection of status. They're happy for you, them to be single, you're not happy. And you're gonna have this clash, unconsciously. So you're facing every day something that you can't. It's a little bit like working in a, in a bakery while you're on a diet. So every single day you see pain chocolat and cakes and stuff, you can't eat them. That's frustrating. So don't, don't, you know, don't sort of uh, torture yourself with that. You feel, you think it's good for you, but actually in the background, it's actually what creates the pain. So remember that no context is uh, what I call a power move. It's really reclaiming that confidence, reclaiming that I take the lead. And it's your turn to dictate the rules.
on your own terms. The terms that you'll find out by self-reflecting. Sixth one is to help you deal with your emotions. And that's from my point of view as a therapist, the most important uh, aspect of no contact. When you're in touch with your ex, there's this um, flow of emotions, negative, positive, it's a roller coaster. And when you are in that roller coaster, it's very hard for you to learn important skills, the skills of how to deal with emotions. It's what I do <laughs> for a living, is to help people dealing with emotion. I do it for a living and even for me, sometimes it's hard. <laughs> and I find myself having emotions driving my behavior. So the reason it's so important, the reason is that the foundation of, of a lot of um, therapeutic uh, relationships in my work is that when you master the way of dealing with emotions, you master or you reduce the anxiety from uncertainty. You address your insecurities, you get more secure, if we talk about attachment theory. You break any sort of codependency framework. These are all links with emotions. So it's really about tapping into those emotions, reflecting, looking at them, trying to control them, that you'll grow stronger after that breakup. And the only way to do it is to go no contact, to have a phase of no contact where it's only you. You are the only, the only person, you're only focusing your attention on yourself. And for me, again, as a therapist, that's amazing because I see so much growth, so much progress, so much change in people. Because you allow yourself to, you know, when you have a session with me or with Elizabeth, these 45 minutes just for you reflecting and growing. And every time you have that session, every time I see people like almost like transformative. Of course, it's a muscle, so you need to work, you need to work out that muscle, you need to train that muscle. So of course, my job is to help people, to coach people, to learn those skills and then for them to sort of uh, a little bit like a, a teacher who teach you uh, the exercises to do and then you do it at home, okay? Because the idea is for you to be self-reliant and having that new skill in your toolbox. And the last one is the reset button, something I call the reset button. The reset button is the idea that your relationship is dead. A previous relationship with your partner, with your ex, is dead. It's dead to them and what you're doing when you maintain contact, when you are in touch with your ex consistently, you're trying to maintain this old relationship that they rejected in the first place. So your job is to create a new one. And when I say your job, your job and your ex's job is to create a new one and a better one. And it is why space and time is the only way. The way I see it, and I'm working on a project, a secret project, a new business, where I would coach married couples or anyone in a committed relationship to have these phases of micro breakups in a proactive way, where you would make the relationship evolve. Because very often I see, amongst my clients obviously, who broke up, that one feels they evolve, but the other hasn't. They feel like they've changed, but their, their partner hasn't. And because they haven't communicated that throughout the relationship, they wake up one morning and feel like, what am I doing with that person? And it's too late, or it's harder to repair. So the idea is to really create this idea of proactive breakup. And that's what you're doing right now is to create that space and really try to re-engage after a breakup and show the change. So they feel like you've they've evolved and you haven't. So use that space to catch them up. If you're always in touch with them, they won't see the change. They won't see the change for sure. See it as like a body transformation, weight loss. If you're always with someone, you, it's be hard for you to perceive that they lost weight or gained muscle or whatever. If you don't see that person for six months and they lose weight, you'll feel the change, you feel the wow effect. That's what we need to trigger for your ex to feel like, oh, then I made an assumption that I, I shouldn't work with that person because he couldn't change. I was wrong. 
and the person I see in front of me is what I was dreaming for. Any question, let me know in the comment section. I'll see you next time. Get up, now I ain't a quitter. Toss me the ball, I'm a really big hitter. Big picture, I'm a straight killer.